There have been two fantastic recent papers overviewing submaximal fitness tests, both from Tazil Shushan from Western Sydney University. So in reviewing the literature for all the submaximal fitness tests that had been reported from team sports, they found over 100 different protocols and they found different approaches to analyzing the outcome measures. So they found a mixture of monitoring locomotive exercise performance, so that's the movement profile, or using RPE, which is rating of perceived exertion, or using cardiovascular, so heart rate indices. And in fact, heart rate measures were the most commonly applied outcome measure for this test. Now within the heart rate indices, there is heart rate during exercise, which tends to be the last either 30 seconds or 60 seconds of the test, or looking at heart rate recovery, either through heart rate variability or through pure heart rate recovery beats per minute drop off. Now that can be quite hard to manage in the applied setting and obviously makes it a little bit more disruptive. And so unsurprisingly, heart rate during exercise is the most common, but also crucially the most reliable from the analysis. Now this group were also able to put together practical applications and a suggested protocol. And here is that representation of that protocol. So they recommend using a continuous, so rectangular or linear track whereby longer shuttles are used. So there's less of a change of direction demand. You want to aim for a constant intensity and they recommend one that's between about 75 to 85% of heart rate maximum. The duration should be about three to four minutes and they recommend using mean heart rate exercise. So either that 30 second or 60 second period for the last minute of the test. All other usual rules apply in terms of using typical error to establish a meaningful change, but also monitoring any notable changes such as the environment and doing it on a consistent day within the microcycle. So remember the idea around these submaximal fitness tests are that they are simple, they are non-exhaustive, and they are integrated into the training session, often as part of the warm-up. So one study has compared whether tracking the predicted versus actual internal load response to small-sided games in the training session, how does that method add to the submaximal fitness test heart rate during exercise? approach. Now this paper actually has a particularly special place in my heart because it is dedicated to my former boss and mentor Nick Broad who we lost in a car accident in 2013. The paper is published by the group from Paris Saint-Germain at the Times. So Ben Simpson, Mathieu Lacom, Martin Bouchard and based on the work that first Nick was doing and then they continued there. So in this study, they were able to use that method we just described of a standardized submaximal fitness test. In fact, that they used a 12 kilometer an hour straight run over a 50 by 100 meter rectangular course. And on average, the athletes included in this study did that test on four occasions and their heart rate at the end of that exercise. So the end of that fixed standardized submaximal external load was assessed. They also then used machine learning to predict heart rate exertion from a number of their small-sided games ranging in size and numbers in situ. So heart rate exertion was predicted based off of the external low parameters from each drill and then the actual heart rate was compared to what was predicted. They found a large correlation between within player changes in the heart rate difference between predicted and actual from the in-situ small-sided game monitoring with the heart rate changes based on the heart rate from the standardized run. Now, interestingly, they say that, yes, it is a large correlation. So perhaps if you are not already doing a submaximal fitness test, then doing this approach on your training drills could be a sufficient way of analyzing fitness fatigue status in situ. But conversely, whilst it's, it's not a perfect correlation, and so perhaps they are looking at slightly different aspects of fitness, which is not surprising if you consider the demands of that very consistent, continuous submaximal run against the chaotic, changeable demands associated with football drills. So. In an ideal world, if you can do both, you may be best arming yourself 
to monitor changes in fitness fatigue and readiness.